Hello there, my name is Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. Now the traditional way to program a microcontroller like the Raspberry Pi Pico would be using the C and C++ SDK. There's also a way to program it using the Arduino IDE, which means that you also get the advantage that you can program it uh, and the same program can work on other microcontrollers. And also you can use a language like Python, specifically MicroPython. Well, today I want to tell you about another way that you can program the Raspberry Pi Pico, and that's using BASIC. That popular programming language from the home computer revolution in the 80s and 90s it was invented uh, several decades before that. I've written a basic interpreter. I've talked about it in a couple of other videos and now I've ported it to the Raspberry Pi Pico. It's working, you can flash the LED, you can get output on the screen. So if you wanna find out more, please let me explain. <laughs> Okay, let's jump into Piccolo Basic, a basic interpreter for the Raspberry Pi Pico. So just as a recap, I went into detail and demonstrated my basic interpreter in the video. I wrote a basic interpreter, what should I do with it? And as a little Easter egg here, did anyone notice that's actually some code there from uh, what is now Piccolo Basic running in that little screenshot there. So Basic, the beginner's all-purpose symbolic instruction code. It's been around for decades and it was very popular during the home computer revolution of the 1980s. So here's a very simple basic program. It has line numbers, so line 10, print, Gary explains, line 20, go to line 10. It will just go around in a loop printing Gary explains on the screen. Now, one of the first things I did was remove the need for line numbers. It said you have labels, so go sub, a sub. A sub is a label down here. And so it will jump down to here, a subroutine. It will print subroutine and then return, makes it return to here. Then there's a loop, one to 10, prints out I, prints out end, and then ends the program. So that was a very simple, what is now a Piccolo basic uh, program that I talked about in that previous video. Now Piccolo Basic isn't feature complete, however it does have quite a lot of stuff. So there's let, if, print, for, go to, go sub, there's string variables, floating point numbers, built-in functions like random, integer, and time, sleep delay, push and pop, which is a stack for integers, there's maths functions like sine and cosine, and so on. So it's not complete, but there's quite a lot of stuff in there. You can actually start writing some good programs. So the challenge was now to take that basic interpreter I wrote that was basically running on the command line and port it to the Raspberry Pi Pico. Now microcontrollers boot and run a program on the flash and Piccolo Basic would be that program that's running on the flash. However, it needs to load a basic program, a basic script and run that. So if you've got a program that's already running, how does it load up a script? Uh, and run that, well that means we need a file system and a way to upload basic scripts, basic programs to that file system. Thankfully MicroPython and CircuitPython already do this. We're gonna try and do the same thing and therefore maintain some compatibility. And the way MicroPython does it, it uses a file system called LittleFS. ARM developed a fail-safe file system for microcontrollers called LittleFS. It's power loss resilient, which means that it's designed to handle random power failures because this is designed for embedded systems, for microcontrollers. There's no shutdown command. There's no click on here and go to shutdown. It, the power just gets taken away. It's got dynamic wear leveling, which means it doesn't just write to the same block all the time. And it doesn't uh, use much RAM and ROM. And as the file system increases in size, it doesn't use more. So it's RAM bounded, which means that you uh, know that it's not gonna run out of memory, particularly on a small microcontroller. It's open source under the BSD3 clause license, which makes it perfect for what we're trying to do. And as I said, it's already been used by MicroPython, which means if we use it, we could try and maintain some compatibility. So the Raspberry Pi Pico has two megabytes of flash. That's a total of 2048K. Now the way MicroPython does it and the way Piccolo Basic does it is the first 640K is for the interpreter, the basic interpreter, MicroPython interpreter. And then the rest of it is for the little FS, which would be for your basic programs, any data files. Later on, of course, we could really extend Piccolo Basic to have, you know, SQL databases, file IO, load up images, you know, whatever it wants, it can get it all from this file system. And this way, by doing it the same way, Piccolo Basic remains compatible with MicroPython. And there is just a quick sketch of what the looks like. First 640K for Piccolo Basic, the rest for the file system. Now, one thing worth mentioning here, the idea is if you replace Piccolo Basic with MicroPython, this part remains the same, doesn't get touched, and therefore your file system remains uh, as it was. 
So how do you upload a script to the uh, little file? And because if the basic program is running, then how can you get access to little FS? Remember, there's no external access. You can't plug it in USB and then get access to the little FS filing system. So I added a command mode to the interpreter that works and understands with little FS. So sending control C twice one after the other will pause the interpreter and enter command mode. In command mode, you can do like LS, you can do CD, change directory, remove a file. You can cause the uh, controller to reboot. You can exit and go back into the interpreter. And most importantly, you can upload, which will upload a file over the serial to the uh, little FS file system. And so I wrote a little Python script called Piccolo Basic Serial Monitor and File Uploader, PBCMON, and basically acts as a serial monitor. So you can see the output from Piccolo Basic. Remember, a microcontroller like the Pico doesn't have HDMI. You can connect it up to other things like VGA. I've got a video about that here on this channel. However, normally you just see the output over the USB uh, in a serial monitor. That's what this little program does. And it also acts as an uploader get enters command mode, uploads the basic script, and then reboots the Pico. Now I'll demonstrate all of that in a moment. Demo time is upon us, but don't go away because after the demo, we're gonna talk about the roadmap, Piccolo OS, and most importantly, where to get hold of the source code. Okay, so here we are on the command line of a Raspberry Pi. My Raspberry Pi Pico is connected to the Raspberry Pi via the USB serial port. Now the first program I want to show you is that very simple one that goes round in a loop, so it just loop, print Gary explains, sleep one, go to loop, so it prints Gary explains every second. So it has to be called main.bass at the moment, that's uh, one of the limitations. So we're just gonna copy that to main.bass, and now we're gonna use the PB serial monitor program. We want it to upload main.bass, and we wanna do that to the, uh, the, to the port which is connected, this, connected to the uh, Raspberry Pi Pico. And so if we do that now, it says it's uploading, entering command mode, started upload, and it's worked. Now we run the same program, but just off, just with the, uh, the serial port without the program. And here we can see the output, Gary explains, Gary explains, Gary explains, uh, pretty simple. So there you go, that works. Now I want to show you the second demo. So I've already named it into uh, main.bass. Basically, we're looking at a for loop, one to 10, let x equal to random int, print x, next i. So go around that loop 10 times, then end. But notice here the sleep five at the beginning. The reason I've done that is because, of course, the, ran the Pico is pretty fast. If you upload this and then it just reboots, you're not going to have time to get the serial port connected, the monitor, to see what's coming from the output. So in this case, what I do is I just sleep, and that gives me time to uh, actually run it. So first of all, we'll upload it. So we use the uh, upload program again, enters command mode, uploaded. And now quickly, we want to go into the actual serial monitor. There we go, we got it in time. And there you can see the 10 uh, random numbers that have come out there. Okay, the next one is the bottles of soda uh, program. So it just basically 99 bottles of soda on the wall, but rather than having to print that out 99 times, a little loop here, one to 99, that prints out what it's got to say to make sense. Uh, so you get the 99 bottles of soda on the wall, take one down, pass it around and so on. Again, notice the sleep five here at the beginning. So we'll upload that. There we go. And then we'll quickly just go in and catch some of the output. There you go, all those bottles of soda on the wall uh, printed out according to that for loop. Okay, one last demo. So this is a GPIO program, so pin in it, pin 25 is the built-in LED on the Raspberry Pi Pico, pin in it, pin 25, uh, pin dir out, direction out, so set the direction out for pin 25, then go to, there's a loop here, print on, pin on 25, sleep one, print off, pin off 25, sleep one, go around in a loop. So it'll basically flash the LED and print on and off on the screen. We don't need the print the sleep at the top here because this is a loop. So we'll catch the output here at some point. So let's upload it. And now let's look at the output. Off, on, off, on, there we go. And we can actually see here also the LED flashing on the Raspberry Pi Pico. So that finishes the demos of the basic language and the basic interpreter, but let's just have a quick look at command mode. Now, you can't use this interactively from within the PB serial mod, but you can use it via Minicom. So if you connect to Minicom to the Raspberry Pi Pico, and here we're seeing the same thing on, off, on, off. Now, we can send two control C's. You press control C once, and then again quickly a second time. So once, twice. 
Okay, it replies with it in the basic command mode. Now, the program has paused and we're now in this special command mode. So for example, as I said, you can do LS. Okay, there's no echoing back here because it's just literally the characters being sent. This is meant to be really for a machine to do it. But you can see here, look, main.bass There's also some Python programs on there because as I said, this is compatible with the way that uh, Python does it. There's a directory there called libs. So we could do cd lib. You won't really see me typing this, but there you go. And then it comes up with OK, ls, and there it is like that. Okay, and then there's an upload command that you can enter and then you're meant to then send the bytes of the file that you want to upload. Look at this, that Python script to see how that works. But this is the this is this command mode, which is very, very useful for actually accessing things on the file system. If you type exit, it returns to the interpreter and it now carries on flashing the LED and it also carries on printing there uh, on the output. Okay, so what roadmap is there? Well, there's lots to do. I mean, this is nowhere near feature complete. These are just some of the things I've been thinking of. More language features. It'd be nice to be able to have peek and poke so that back in the day, of course, people loved to be able to peek and poke uh, into hardware addresses and cause fancy things to happen on their uh, home computer or whatever. So if we could peek and poke directly to the registers of the Raspberry Pi Pico, you could even turn uh, an LED on and off just by using a poke command. So that would be good to have in there. Longer variable names at the moment, they're just one letter. That's a throwback from the origins of Piccolo Basic. There's no negative numbers, some 64-bit numbers were good. Being able to use hexadecimal numbers starting with 0x would be good. We need better looping, some steps, reverse loops, maybe a while loop, file I.O. would be really good. These are all language features that we need to add in. And then more hardware support. There is some GPIO support that can make an LED flash now in Piccolo Basic. But of course, that's only just the beginning. There's I squared C, SPI, the programmable I.O., then if you've got a Raspberry Pi Pico W, there's networking and Bluetooth. It would be good if we had some standard displays, you know, maybe some uh, I squared C displays or something so that you could just wire it up and you would know it would just work with Piccolo Basic without having to do anything fancy. I quite fancy the idea of USB keyboard support, but that would be possible. So if you had a display and a keyboard, then maybe we could get ourselves a little microcomputer running here where you can actually just type things in and they appear you know, on the, on the display that works there. All possible things for the future. And of course I have Piccolo OS, that is my uh, multitasking operating system for the Raspberry Pi Pico. Now, wouldn't it be fun if we built Piccolo Basic on top of Piccolo OS? So then we get multitasking basic. This could be great. We could add some constructs to basic to run other scripts in parallel. It's real time preemptive multitasking, which is fantastic. Add in some locks and synchronization, mutexes uh, and so on, so we can get things uh, working between the scripts. We can add in support for the second CPU core, all under Piccolo Basic with uh, Piccolo uh, OS uh, underneath providing all this stuff. That would be a great way to go forward as well. Now, Piccolo Basic is open source. You can find it on my GitHub repository, uh, github.com slash garyexplain slash Piccolo Basic. If you want to start adding features, let's collaborate. The more, the merrier, uh, and the more we can get things done, the more we can get things advanced. Now, remember, for the Raspberry Pi Pico, you've got C, C++. We've also got Python. I think this is a great addition to the Raspberry Pi Pico lineup by having a basic interpreter, and this really could be developed to, to be really uh, useful for teaching programming and for doing uh, simple projects that you want to do uh, without having to learn too much complicated stuff. Okay, that's it. So my name's Gary Sims. You can follow me here on social media. All the things there are on the screen. And of course, you can keep following me on my channel at Gary Explains. I do hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. If you like these kind of videos and you want to find out more what's going to happen with Piccolo Basic, please subscribe to the channel. That's it. I'll see you in the next one.